Welcome back to the doghouse. Today I've got uh, one of those projects I just love doing, and this is uh, from the World of Tanks series. And I've done a lot of Panthers, and in fact, I've even built um, a couple of those Panther F, Panther, uh, Panther twos. Well, <clears throat> recently I acquired this old Panther two kit from DML. Uh, what am I going to do? I've already built one of these. Um, but I got this idea. There's this really neat camouflage they've got on the World of Tanks game. It's kind of an urban camouflage, and I thought, hmm, that'll be, uh, be kind of a fun thing to try out. And uh, we'll make some other modifications to this particular kit. Well, <clears throat> we're going to get started on that. And as I'm thinking about it, I want to put a muzzle brake on the, uh, on the 88. In fact, I want to try and do an, an L100, not the uh, L71 version. So this, this ought to be interesting. Nice long gun. You know, that'd be kind of fun. Um, so what I'm going to do for the muzzle brake, I'm going to borrow, because this particular kit has two different uh, barrels in it, and I'm going to borrow one of the barrels, well, borrow, not return it, and put it on this, uh, this Panther too. So stick with us today, and let's see how things go in this build of our Panther II from World of Tanks. Well, like I said, this isn't my first go around with the Panther II. Here's one that I built a few years ago directly from the box. So you can see the nice smooth uh, gun on it. Painted it in kind of a dark uh, green camo from late in the war. Turned out pretty good, but I really thought it'd be fun to do one with a muzzle brake. So I took the uh, extra gun out of the DML uh, King Tiger with the Porsche turret that you saw sitting there on the desk and uh, built the gun, built the uh, the carriage, the whole thing, and I'm going to attempt to put it in the uh, the turret from the kit, which is a little bit big. It's a little bit weird size, but we're going to try it anyway. So I've got it assembled, got it put in there. Uh, the only problem is I think that if this thing were to really fire, it would have just punched out the back of the turret, but, you know, Anyway, this is how I built it. It's how it, how it is. This is what I'm trying to replicate. This is from my garage in World of Tanks. This is the one that I like to take out and play with on the game. It's got this urban ruined camouflage that I really like. That and the fact that it's got that, that dark gray. I think that looks pretty cool on a panther. So here's how we did the camouflage. First off, I gave it a base coat of this tire black. So I did black base the whole entire thing. And then I used, uh, it's called Mitten Blau or you know, whatever. It's kind of a, a light blue. Um, and I did airbrush that, but then I also went along with the brush and kind of hard edged the edges on it. Um, then I used this one here. Uh, it's called a uh, just a, a dark gray. It's 36176. And then to go over the black, I used just regular gunship gray, 36118. Uh, uh, and this is actually an enamel that I went over that uh, the rest of the black with, and I left just little teeny streaks of black in it uh, as part of that camouflage. Then I took a toothpick and I grabbed some of the blue and some of the black and just made these little speckly uh, parts on it, kind of to help break up that camouflage, make it look more like what is actually there in the uh, game. And even put it on the top, even though I am going to put something over that. For the decal, I just used a cross out of, I believe it was this kit, and got it put on, and then went ahead and put the dull coat on over all of that. So this is what the turret looks like, ready to go, ready for the plate armor. And I've cut out a piece of styrene, put it on, and then I've painted it with a uh, dark reddish brown, and done some weathering with some pastels on it. The pastels I've used are Mars Brown and Mars Red. Now we're going to take some uh, Snow White. This is a uh, uh, it's an oil and I'm gonna put some little dots along the bottom and then I'm gonna use my brush to kinda uh, sweep up with them to give it kinda that uh, rain uh, appearance when rain you know runs down the side of the turret and then I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, brown and again it's an oil I'm gonna put it along the top edges and I'm gonna wash or I'm gonna brush down to uh, give some streaks that are uh, going down and you can kinda see the finished appearance of the uh, overall turret here so now we're gonna set this aside for a few minutes and work on the hull 
So first off, uh, we're going to go ahead and put in all of the uh, torsion bars and then move to the wheels. I'm going to paint those first, of course, because I don't want to have just bare plastic in between them and get those built up and painted. Look pretty darn good, I think. Uh, use a little bit of uh, kind of a steel color on the edges to give that uh, appearance that they're used. Now I've got to cut this part off the hull here. And you can see I've glued a new piece on there. This is all in the instructions. This is the same upper hull as the uh, Panther F. So there is a few modifications. This is one of them. Um, here I've taken off uh, the mountings for that tube that goes along the side. I guess there's antenna that go, sections go in there. Anyway, I've removed that and I've had to fill that. You can see I've given the whole um, upper hull kind of a metallic finish. Boy, there was a lot of injector pin marks I had to fill on these uh, these racks for the tracks. They were they were really bad. But uh, anyway, I've got those filled and sanded, and it's pretty smooth. I think we're going to be okay with how that turned out. So you can see here on the upper hull some of the modifications that I've made, and I think we're getting ready for uh, some regular old paint here. Got everything sanded smooth that I needed to, and. I'm happy with the uh, results of the mods that I've I've made to this. So we'll uh, mix up our paint. I'm going to save you the whole spiel because you saw it already. Here is what we wind up with. Um, not too bad. Not too bad. Very similar to the turret. Uh, of course, we're going to have to do quite a bit of weathering. And here we've got the wheels on. I've given it just a little bit of a treatment on the wheels as far as the camouflage. I think in the game they're just gray, but I had to add a little bit. I uh, think this uh, looks okay, actually. So we'll move on to do a little bit of that weathering that we talked about. And Oh, what's this? This is one of the uh, changes that I made, one of the modifications that I made. You see this thing sticking out the back end? Well, it's the uh, engine for this particular tank. The Panther II never went into mass production. There was one hull that was made. And one of the proposals that they were talking about in engineing this, uh, this behemoth was they were going to put in a larger Maybach engine, or it was thought they could use the BMW 003 turbojet engine to power it. Now, this would have been a great um, option, even though it went through a lot of fuel. It had over 1,000 horsepower. It was like seven eight hundred pounds lighter it would have moved this tank that was heavier than a standard panther at a higher rate of speed uh, and made it much more maneuverable than the regular panther so I thought it'd be fun to kind of model this on my particular tank uh, here's a look at the front the glasses plate and and how that's uh, coming along and here we have the turret put on the tank you can see the big difference between the weathering with the turret and what we still have to do on the uh, on the hull. And then, of course, we're going to have a lot of little details to put on. So I'm going to take a minute and get that done. And through the magic of television, here you go. I have mounted on the left side what I believe would be kind of an external, external fuel tank to help with all of the fuel that that uh, turbojet would have eaten. But also, in this late in the war, uh, I decided to go ahead and put a 55 gallon auxiliary fuel tank, uh, kind of uh, strapped it down to the uh, to the back. And you can see here's how my uh, jet engine uh, looks. Now, it wouldn't have been straight in there. It would have had to have been on an angle because this thing was, uh, was long. It wasn't uh, necessarily wide. It was just long. And there I've mounted my spare wheel. Uh, to the back. They had my book, they had to tie that down. So that's kind of how the back end of my tank turned out. And you can see the weathering that I've done with some pastel chalk. Uh, I've added a little bit of dust and dirt to it, as well as the wash, and as well as the uh, the streaks from the, uh, the, the white, the snow white. If you look at the bottom of the glass just plate, you can see looking up kind of those rain streaks. Here we are with the uh, muzzle brake. I like this. I think this thing looks really, really mean. Um, definitely meaner than the uh, standard Panther II that uh, I built years ago. I really like the way this thing uh, sits. Uh, went ahead and added a, a brass antenna to it. Uh, they're on the back. And in this uh, top view, you can see the bucket on the side. Um, I added a... Uh, 
a box where that um, where some of the tool stowage was and uh, just kind of give you a, a look of my idea of what this thing could have looked like went ahead and stuck one of my figures in the turret just for uh, giggles and grins and here we go yeah kind of a aggressive looking tank well I hope you like this and I have taken this thing out in World of Tanks several times and I absolutely love playing with this that 88 uh, is a very potent gun for a medium tank um, this thing plays very very well so uh, this was a fun build and I hope you've enjoyed looking at my uh, my urban camouflage here it is on my train layout at night kinda kinda cool looking uh, I think so hey thanks for joining us